And I'll tell you one area where I'm really struggling, right, is sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. What is the role of sense of purpose? Now, I have vacillated in my life on this. There have been times when I had such a grandiose view of my role that I felt everyone should have a legacy. I mean, it was a bit of an inside joke. So, you know, my wife and I who met in Baltimore, where you met your wife, um, uh, when I was in residency, which was a, you know, kind of a slog, right? This was, you know, you're working 110 to 120 hours a week. Um, and talk about asynchronous time, right? Like, I, you know, my wife is working two jobs. I'm working one job that might as well be right. three. I mean, we're virtually never together. Right. Um, and when we are, I was just working. Right, so I was either swimming or working on this surgical manual I wanted to write. Mm. Uh, I wanted to write like the all singing, all dancing Bible for surgical residents. And she's sort yes. of like, what the hell are you doing? Like, <laughs> why don't we just chill out? And I was like, no, 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 like this thing's gonna be my legacy. And she mm. thought it was so funny that she actually got me a t-shirt that said, what's your legacy? But it said like <laughs> PA, it was my initials, colon, quote, what's your legacy? Like she's just <laughs> mocking me with this t-shirt. Um, and then I think about where I am now, where I, I, I'm so far at the other end of the spectrum that I also worry it's problematic, which is, I don't think there's any such thing as legacy. Like mm -hmm. we're all gonna die, none of it matters. If I died tomorrow, nothing changes. The earth will continue to move on its axis with the exact same precision as if I live to a hundred, like <laughs> nothing will change. And if I live another 40 years, no matter what I do in those 40 years, it won't matter. Nothing mm -hmm. will change in the universe. And uh, you write about this idea of cosmic insignificance therapy. Mm -hmm. Both of these seem problematic right like yeah. the, the yeah. total lack of sense of purpose which i'm not saying i don't have a sense of purpose i'm just saying i feel so insignificant that it, mm -hmm. it, it it i flirt with the idea of being so insignificant that i think it there are days i struggle with doing things because i'm like well i do yeah. them because i'm i'm good at sort of doing things <laughs> but right. but that's yeah. very different um whereas arthur brooks in from strength to strength would really talk about this important of sense of purpose right and this yeah the, yeah. the joy the fulfillment that comes from having a purpose that's larger than yourself so how yeah. I mean, i'm sure you've thought through all of these things how do you rectify that particular issue of is what we're talking about here too nihilistic it's so interesting and i yeah i mean i think what we're circling around here, I, I, I don't think I'm going to solve the mystery of what of the theory that unites the, the books, but I, I think we're circling around this idea of of finitude and reconciling ourselves to what it means to be finite. Obviously, that's my particular angle, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing it from my perspective, but it's this, it's this way of thinking about meaning in life that doesn't accept this binary of like either we are gods either we do things that echo down the centuries forever or if we can't that must mean that we're nothing and there's no point in it all right it's a very there's something kind of i mean very seductive about it and i'm i'm as bad as anyone at falling into this but there's something sort of inhuman about that because it doesn't kind of meet who we who we really are as humans which is sort of extraordinary and capable of extraordinary things and also very much not not gods so in the section of the book on cosmic insignificance therapy i'm sort of first of all explaining how i feel that it's very it, it can be very energizing and empowering to sort of drop the requirement the the inner requirement that we everything we do in our lives has to be sort of extraordinarily um important on a on a grand scale because obviously if you zoom out far enough you can make anybody's life completely unimportant and you can do that with like mozart if you zoom out far enough right mm -hmm. i mean uh some people might be remembered for several thousand years but you know just make it a million years instead right and so so there's nothing 
there's nothing that we can do that matters in that sense. And I think that can be very liberating. It means that, you know, if you're prone to indecision and spending time feeling like you've got to do things exactly right, then it's a good reminder that like doesn't matter enough to 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 worry about. But yes, then of course the risk is that you're sort of lifted out of that terrible kind of like, oh no, am I doing things extraordinarily enough with my life? Is this am I getting things right or am I going the wrong way? You're lifted out of it so far that it becomes sort of lighter than air and it's like, well there's just why am I even here? What's the point? I've been really, really um, influenced here by the work of a philosopher called Ido Landau, who wrote a book called um, Finding Meaning in an Imperfect World. And um, he's um, one of the points I take him to be making there is just like, it's quite strange that when it comes to uh, thinking about what, what meaning is, what purpose is, we we insist on using these um, these criteria that either no human, or maybe in some cases, sort of a tiny number of humans in each generation could ever hope to meet. Um, there's something sort of cruel to ourselves in saying that 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 meaning is is only at this cosmic level, and it's it, it it's slightly arbitrary. It probably is motivated by our fear of death and wanting to feel like we're immortal and and um that our legacy will 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 last forever but you can sort of drop it to some extent you can say well like if what i'm doing with my life influencing a number of you know making life better for a number of my contemporaries or even just you know being a good parent uh being a good member of my neighborhood like if I'm using a standard of meaning that is defining that as pointless, well, maybe I can just use a different standard rather than um, have to feel that what I'm doing is is me is meaningless. And so I think Landau would argue that the the nihilist, the person who thinks like there's there's no point in anything, he thinks he's being really sort of um, facing the hard facts of life, right? He's saying like, don't kid yourself. There's there's no point to any of this. But in fact, he's kind of um, still clinging on to a fantasy which is that like that he should be able to he's got very high standards for what meaning should be right and then he finds that the nihilist then he finds that life doesn't measure up to the standards so he's like well it's all pointless but in fact those standards i feel like we even know that those standards don't apply right i mean again we're talking before about meaningful times when you're helping a friend through a crisis or something like that like there's a feeling of meaning in those times or a feeling perhaps of aliveness, some people might say, um, that is kind of feels self-justifying, right? Sure, you can still point out that in any X number of thousands of years, it wouldn't have mattered that you were there for that person, but it mattered then. Um, and Landa has this great line about like, you know, we don't, we're, we're always doing this thing to ourselves where we're saying like, well, it's not a meaningful human existence because something that we couldn't be expected to do as humans is 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 something that we're not that we're not doing that thing if someone uh loves their dog you don't kind of correct them and tell them that actually their dog is no good because it can't drive um if if someone has a really nice chair in their house that's a real pleasure to sit on, you don't say, well, no, it's a useless chair because it can't boil water for a cup of tea, right? We just don't expect things. We don't we don't expect those things of those of those things. So fine. And and can we maybe not expect of ourselves as as finite humans these kind of godlike uh acts of cosmic meaning and still find that the meaning that is available to us as as finite humans is actually like really, really something serious and important and that becoming more and more wholeheartedly human is maybe a, a better goal in life than than trying to sort of escape the human condition and become a become superhuman. That makes a lot of sense. And that's the only place that I can reconcile it, Oliver, is um yeah, in the big picture, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm never going to bend the arc of the universe. Like I have no delusion about that, but 
I'll matter to my kids right. and I'll matter to my wife and I'll matter to my friends. And that's the focus. Thank you.